color to tint paper. I never knew the concentration. Is there a is there a formula that you use, like one drop in a a, a, a cup of water? Um, yeah, I mean, what I do is I will um, I will get like a dinner plate, and I'll take like a like a little a, a, a plasticky kind of like even ceramic plate that right. my wife doesn't need anymore, and I just take the this little tube, and I just squeeze out a tiny bit like this, just like on the side of the tube. And then I put water on the other side of the plate. Like you can just, you know, pour a tiny bit. Sure. And then with a larger brush, I just kind of mix up and I grab the watercolor because the watercolor stays, it's very thick and it stays over on the side of the plate. Oh, that's a um, trick. Okay. And then you can mix up. You can even put the watercolor on a piece of plastic next to the plate, but you look at it and you eyeball it. So preferably, oh, the plate should be white. Um, so then you mix it up on that plate and then your plate is like gone and it's like really dark sienna. You're like, no, it's, it's too dark. Right. Um, you thin it out with more water, more water. And then you look at it and it's like kind of like a nice, like, you know, almost like an ambery kind of like right. very light honey color maybe. And then you test it out on the corner of your page and it's good. Uh, the one thing that I, I oftentimes forget to do is before you tint your paper, um, you should give it with a with a, a wet, clean brush with no watercolor. You should give it a quick wet coat. Oh, okay. And then it receives the watercolor more evenly. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. That's um, great. If you look at this drawing that I did, um, uh, the this drawing um, is very inconsistent in coloration. And um, I'm totally fine with it. I don't care. But some artists don't like working on something that is so inconsistent. Like you could probably see it better. This is a very bad scan that I did with a um, yeah very a very powerful scanner. Um, but I'm not, like, I'm, not getting, I'm not receiving anything. Oh, you can't see any pictures. Yep. 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 Oh, okay. Let me. Now uh, I can. Okay. I'm back. So tell me if you can see this. So. Um, now I can. Okay, nice. This is very, the, the picture, this photo is way darker than the actual uh, drawing is. So it's, uh, so anyway, but you can see the inconsistency of the coloration, um, of the tinting, I should say. Yeah. And um, as you work, um, if that bothers you, the inconsistency, then simply put, you just, you know, you make it more consistent the next time. So uh, I kind of like it to have a swirling pattern. Yeah, I do too. So it makes it look ancient, like, you know, something, something done. Yeah. Many, many. Is that graphite you're working in? Yep. Yeah, this is all graphite wow. with, uh, with Mitsubishi pencils and road train. Of course, of course. Yeah. So, uh, and then I, I erased away the, um, the highlights. So what you can actually do is when you tint paper, That's then you right. can erase into the Bring tint. It. And you can get back to the white of the paper, so it gives nice. a soft kind of sfumato. Um, it's really, it's really neat. When it is cool, that. it is cool. Um, so let me jump over here. Um, so that's like that's something that will really um, push your like your drawing is awesome. This is again, this is really in in all the time you and I have worked together. I think I truly think this is one of the very best studies. Huh. That's and right. it just, you really are building. Here's what you did differently today. You're not observing alone. You're building. And that is it. That is what like day in and day out, I'm trying to um, impart to students is that right. don't just observe your way through, but think, think of everything as being built. It's spheres that are built. Um, and it really is, it's the great weakness of side size drawing where Alexander Soukas, when I was working with him, um, really, really talented artist, really knowledgeable. And he had deep concerns about um, the students of Sight Size, that they were overly dependent on observation, but they weren't understanding yeah. what they were doing. And to tell you the truth, he's 100% right. And uh, that's what I was trying to like relate to him when we worked together. I was like, I was like Alexander, because like, he, was, he was brilliant. Um, and I was like, that's why I want to work with you because you almost have like 
the keys to the kingdom. Um, right. and you, you can really help the students who are so heavily reliant on observation. You can yeah, really Kev, help. Kev, by the way, Kevin, not to brag, yeah. but I freehanded this. I didn't use a grid. I, I mean, yeah. I use I use my calipers to get the basic proportions, like the length and the width. But after yeah. that, I just freehanded and kept working it back. And that doesn't look right. I dropped my angles. I kept looking at them like we're yep. a negative space, and I could do this. I can do this now. Yeah, and, and and that's what I'm seeing. Like this is literally the best day of drawing together you and I have had. Yeah. These are these are these really are the best the best drawings that I've seen uh, you do. And you, keep this with you for life, where you say from this point forward, I'm not going to observe alone. I'm going to build. Right. And look at your drawing. I just worked into your drawing, and all I literally did was take that concept and right. apply it. To everything so you could look at it and say well kevin that looks like <clears throat> you know some like marvel dc comic superhero that's okay um that's okay. It, it does it looks like polished aluminum but um yeah. that's that's okay <laughs> like we're, you can draw as if you're working with like an oiled up bodybuilder sure but provided <clears throat> provided you are learning how light flows over form and then if you want to you can minimize all that you could literally take your pinky and run it over that and then it will soften everything um but for well, certainly when, when you deal with a female form you're not going to see this kind of de definition of cuts yes that's correct and if you are seeing those kind of cuts with the female form it's probably one of those gross female bodybuilders that like <laughs> <laughs> there's one it's uh, confusing <laughs> it's just confusing and those, it's it just confusing. confuses me i, I looked at that and said, that's not right <laughs> <laughs> there's there's this one woman uh the gym i used to work out at she would come in and mark she was the biggest guy in the whole gym like she yeah. like yeah. oh my god and i would always think to myself she had a pretty face i'd just be like stop lifting weights like she just looked like oh, I, 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 don't, I don't like it when men look that way like but forget it with women so. yeah with women it's just not it's not the way they're meant to be it's so weird <laughs> um so uh jumping over to uh this leg right here um the, 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 the thought that I have is regarding the humerus, um, I'm sorry, it's regarding the femur. Um, so the femur feels like this is, this is great. Um, the way everything's locking in, we have, let me go a little bit more specific. We have the patella floating right in front of this. Yeah. This is the lower part of the tibia yep. is like receiving this, right? It's like almost like two little like plates that sit on top of each other. Uh, but the thing that I would say um, is I think the shin is coming yeah. a little bit too far forward. Yeah. And the gastrocnemius, the head of it, yeah. um, comes further back and out. So I think there's a little bit of a chopping, like where if I erased into it, um, I almost think it would go like a little bit more like that. And that will help you uh, right sure. there. So that's just a minor thing. Um, and then... Um, there, I would do um, a study of um, a study of the patella and how it floats outside of. So again, these are all things that we know, but it's interesting how the head of the tibia is. Um, there's this like prominence right here, this tuberosity, and then the patella floats outside, right? And the patella is like a independent agent, and all the strapping of the uh, the vastus lateralis goes over the patella and inserts into this tuberosity down here, which explains the one, two of, oh, there it is. You have the tibial tuberosity right there. Nice. Um, so I think this leg study is awesome. I think it's really great. And um, I think uh, an in-depth study of the patella um, would be an awesome thing for you to do um, in profile. Um, you nailed yeah, it right it, here. Um, Back to our anatomy book, they have a whole two pages dedicated to that, by the way. Oh, awesome. You know what? I, I didn't even know it. Yeah, you just keep thumbing through this book and you come across these little gems. It's yeah. really amazing. Yep. And um, like there, there are some classes where you and I get together and, you know, I'll have thoughts and it's like, they'll be like, okay, you know, heighten this, move this shape. That's it. That's not today. Today is more so a thing of like, this is really solid this is right in the direction that you should be going in right. and 
and here's your next step. So I really, um, the fact that you found two pages on that book devoted to the patella, like just when you jump in and do that, um, and then you get back to um, working with like the figure from life, from photographs, whatever it might be, um, you are going to see like such a dramatic difference. Like I think you will be, you yourself will be blown away because like you can take figure studies that you've done and do exactly what you did right here. Right. Um, where when I have problematic areas and did I, I can't remember, did I pull up the image of Liam's hand for you? I don't think I did that. Whose hand? Well, my son, Liam. No. Um, no. Let me, let me see if I can um, do that because it shows you, it shows you what I myself, Kevin, I'm up to like, rather than just like, uh, do this, do that. Um, let me see. Did I create a new file? I thought I created a new file for anatomy. Um, maybe it was a file file. Uh, yeah, just bear with me a moment. Um, anatomy. And I think this is just model poses. Yeah, that's from Stan Prokopenko. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, um, yes. so then I didn't save it in here. Okay, so if you bear with me for a moment, yeah, no problem. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a little bit and I'm going to um, see if I can pull up how I work. Yeah, I just did this the other day. I'm surprised I didn't save that. Oh, there it is. Cool. That's it. So I can pop this into your program. Uh, da, 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 da. Locations. I don't know why it's not letting me out of here. <laughs> um, cancel. Insert a photo. Recents. So, do you know my uh, Facebook videos that I was doing? I, I sure do. Sure. Um, so, for that hand, this hand has not at this point in the painting uh, yet been painted in on the right. Um, but look at all the studies I did for that hand. And cool. so, I started out right here. Um, I jumped from there to there. Then I brought it over and I put all the muscles into it. So really what we're talking about is a skeletal study. Um, then I'll call it a contour study. So skeletal contour. Um, then I went with a muscle study and then this is all the parts together. So I'll say all the parts together. Um, and then I, then I returned to the painting. So it shows you how, how many different, like look at the geometric essence study I did of that thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the amount of work, I mean, that's a lot of work to put into um, one simple drawing of a, um, let me see if I can get this wider, uh, one simple drawing or painting, I should say. Um, but I needed to get it right. And so you, 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 you're learning two things here. You're learning, okay, I'm, I'm learning about uh, drawing and painting the human figure, but you're also learning how to teach yourself. Um, how, you're, you're actually learning how to learn with right, right. Um, figurative drawing and painting. And that's where you're really getting into the realm of, uh, you know, Michelangelo's studies. Um, last night I was sitting uh, for Father's Day. My, we were sitting around and all of us were just like talking and I had my huge Tashin Da Vinci book open. It's like, the book is like probably 20 inches tall by like 10 inches wide. It's it weighs like 30 pounds. <laughs> um, and I was just looking at Da Vinci's studies and he just has all these human segments, just all these, the product of all his dissections. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. sure, sure. Um, and so learning how to learn. And so as you jump over um, right here, you're, this is excellent. I, I literally, I, I think that what you've done right here is, is outstanding. And what I would say is, 
um, whoops, let me put that back over. What I would say is um, then as you jump over to um, the, what we'll call like uh, all the all the horses running, what do they call that? <laughs> when you have everything going at the same time. Right. Um, so with everything running right here, I'd get back to that idea of tinting the paper and getting some white chalk. The mistake that's made sometimes with white chalk is when people go white chalk everywhere in the light. Right. Um, and if you do that, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a flute or a piccolo in an orchestra. If it's playing the entire time, it doesn't really mean much. But if you have this steady kind of like the lower register of the strings, and then there's this soaring note choicely placed right above it, then yep. then it works. And that's kind of like like right here where let's say the um so I, I believe the light is coming from right here in the drawing. And so a little bit of white chalk right here, a little bit at the top of the bicep right there. Oh man. A little bit. <laughs> what a just, oh man, I wish I'd known that. That is really cool. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And and you you have the framework. I'm like you're watching me. I'm I'm not even changing yeah. the drawing. And so it's like a little bit here and there, and you're just gonna see the whole thing like really pop. Um, right here. I love what you did on the knuckles right here. And I'm just I'm not uh erasing them, I'm just uh blanketing sure some some light um and then you could go digit by digit but you see how much it lifts off um sure. even the, the top of the pectorals if you wanted to allude to that um the serratus anterior disappearing around the form so um that's it's a cool lesson today because yeah, that's literally your, your next step is okay. get either either get some tinted paper um or, I, you know, I, I, have, I have I have gray tinted paper. I I used to have tan. I could work in gray, I guess. Totally. Yep. And I would, if I were you, if I had like a sketch pad, because they sell like nice, cheap um, sketch pads. Um, so if I were you, I, I would work with those for your figure studies. And then um, I, I want to like, I'm like looking on here. Let's just go to tan browns or sometimes blues are really nice to work into um so if you have something like this for a nice project um but that's that's a special piece of paper that's very expensive yeah. but i feel like sometimes you will want to do that um but let's then go with um tinted paper sketchbook um let's just go yeah we'll go geez i uh Bezos should send me a personal thank you letter for all the. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just for Father's Day I got myself a seventy-five dollar gift certificate to Blick. Nice. So That's I could go on Blick. What paper? And I don't think Twin Rockers is in Blick. No, uh, Twin Rocker. They're so successful as a company. Yeah. Um, they just don't need. You know, they right. they don't need. <laughs> to, tell me, uh, tell me where I should spend my money at Blick. What yeah, paper? So is here we go. So I just clicked the button here. Let me see. Um, Sketchpad. Da da da. -da. Um, Blick has fantastic, you know, the selection. Like, so this is a. Oh this yeah. Is a great website for. Um, I'm just trying to find. I, I don't know what they would even call. They have to the paper. I know they do. You know what? Sometimes I find that Google um, tinted paper sketchbook. There you go. I, I find that Google has better search engines than the websites. Yeah, and then and then they'll take you back to Blick anyway. Um, oh, this took me. I, I didn't even realize I thought I was staying with Blick. But you're in Amazon, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so. I, yeah, I, it still will apply. Um, let's go tinted sketchbook, Canson Blick. There you go. Mixed media. So that's this paper right here is tintable. I, I don't think that's a high quality paper, but again, you don't need high quality. No. Um, for everything that you everything that you do, um, sketch pad, da da. 
Um, pastel papers is tinted, but that's not the right type of texture. No, uh, pastel paper depends. Like, um, admittedly, I don't know much about pastel paper, but I, I've worked on it before. But um, you know, nothing like Lana. Like she, she, she really knows. Okay, so this that's, tone. That's a, right. That's uh, yeah. That's what. That's I mean. that's decent stuff. Um, it's not great. Um, let's look tinted, um, Angra paper. Oh, you know what, Mark? Um, uh, Dick Blick merged with Utrecht a while ago, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, tinted paper, Utrecht. Yeah, I'm almost positive. So Utrecht, uh, Utrecht is a little bit more for professional artists. Okay. Um, and I, they were bought out by Blick. Uh, nice. Drawing, drawing tools, pencils and lead, drafting supplies. Okay, we're, oh, art paper. Okay, drawing papers and pads. Um, I think Ang will be in here. There we go, there we go, okay. I'm almost positive they got bought out. This is it, found it. That's it, that's the paper. Okay, Kansen. Yeah, and it's pronounced Ang, even though it's, it Ang. looks like English. Uh, right, Kansen um, and drawing paper. So that's it. And almost positive that this will apply. Um, we could go back and do one last search and go Kansen. Angra Blick and see if Blick has it on its own website. There it is. Um, it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It is. Yeah. Same price. There you are. So I would go probably with um, uh, Sky Blue. Um, okay. That's that's a nice one right there. Um, and that's the right tone. Like I think dark blue is way too dark. Um, Moonstone is just a little too colory, too much color for me. Um, I would stay with sky blue. And this and is good for, for graphite, for working in graphite. For working in graphite. And then, and then you're in the realm of Proudhon drawing blue paper. Um, Proudhon, Proudhon worked on blue paper all the time. Oh, nice. Um, so like... I did, I did a couple of these. I did this, I did the drawing of uh, the woman standing on by the table. I did that one. Yeah, I actually remember that. You you showed that to me, right? Right, I did. Yeah. Now, is this the time to go back and start doing those again? A hundred percent. Well, here's oh, the yeah. thing. Um, to the extent that you know, to to the extent that you are interested in it, um, it's it's something to do for life. Um, where I I myself, me Kevin, um, I have been thinking for a while. I'll show you the uh the study well it's actually it's this one right he here but i don't know why i feel like that's not or this one i i have it's very nice my students um i used to teach in riverhead at a studio there and for christmas they all banded together and yeah that's that's an awesome image of it and they bought me a 200 dollar uh, book on prudhon and I was so touched by it, and that book has since gone up greatly in value. It's one of my treasures that I own. Um, and so I've been thinking lately that I should get back and do a study of, you know, like this guy right here. There's a few other male torsos that yeah. I've just been wanting to return to. Um, that's it. This look, look, I'm just, I'm just, I'm looking at the serratus anterior. I'm looking at the deltoid. Oh yeah. my good gracious. It's so, yeah. it's, it's so yeah. well modeled. I mean, it feels like flesh. And um, so to, again, to re return to your question, is this something you should do? Yeah, like for life. And um, when, you, when, you, when you return to it, when you, I don't want to do a visual search, but I do want to zoom in. Um, okay, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, 
Look at that reflected light right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the eggs. Look at the eggs. You can see the. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing. And so this is this is a great thing to think about because um, if you, as you're looking at this, um, the what I did on your drawing with erasing into your drawing was very overstated. And again, like I, I overstate for the sake of digital media. Um, so that you and I know what sure, we're talking sure. about. Um, but let's go back to your drawing. And if it ever cuts out, let me know. Sometimes sure. it pops out. Um, so right here. Um, now you can see, so you see how overstated, remember I said DC Marvel comic hero? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but that's the subtlety that I'm talking about right there. Um, by, by, the, by the way, I have, I borrowed from the library a copy of, Hol, is it Hogarth, who does the DC Comics? He has a whole book on drawing. Oh, he's good. He's really good. That's yeah, awesome. I, it's hard to get yeah. the book. I had, a way, I had to get to another library. And of course, now the libraries call, are closed. I sort of am holding on to this. But he, yeah. he is something else. Yeah, that's really awesome, Mark. Um, he, in terms of um, building things and function, uh, Comic book artists are the best artists alive today. Um, <laughs> they they just know how to do it. I mean, of course, are they overstated? Yeah, they are. But is, you know what? Like, I'm going to say something terrible here. Sometimes, for the sake of communicating to it, an like a, a viewer sixty feet away, uh, Michelangelo is overstated when you look at him up close. Yeah, yeah sure. And so, so for their graphic media, they're doing what they need to be doing. Yeah. And so um, they're every fine artist should take classes with graphic novelists and with comic book artists to say, Hey, how do I, how do I design this figure in, in motion? You know what I mean? So, yes, um, right. Hogarth is great to study. Um, I have his and, book on and it. Particularly his foreshortening when the, when the Captain Marvel's you literally jumping out the page of you with his yep. hand extended. Yep. The foreshortening is unbelievable. Yep. I agree. Yep. So, I mean, look at the pipe of the sternal Clytomastoideus. Like, yeah. he he literally he actually just viewed that as as being a pipe that goes like this and it inserts, sure. and then he hit it with a highlight right here, and let the other the half tone of the paper sufficed as you know as the um sh as the shadowing, cool right here, um and obviously like grossly overstated by me, but I'm just saying like he let that half tone of the paper, turn the form, and then the um, external contour, you just went in heavy like that. Um, but look at how the sternal clito disappears. And right over here, I actually don't know the name of uh, this little muscle right here. I actually think it's also the sternal clitomastoideus. I, I think you're correct. Two insertion points, yeah. like one, one at the end of the clavicle, not the clavicular notch, but the end of the clavicle, and then a little further up. So maybe it's, two heads of the same. Kevin, I hate to bring this up, but I've got, I'm looking at the anatomy book. They've got a whole page on that little muscle. Cool. No, that's yeah. great. Yeah. I, yes. I, I love it. I love that you're yeah. doing that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, I just referenced this whole type of thing. Just little studies about what, where, where's, they have a study on where the scapula flows as you raise your arm. They have a picture yep. of people, men and women holding their arms up and what happens to the muscle. Amazing awesome. stuff. Yep. Awesome. So, I mean, uh, my thought is um, you are 100%. If you've ever been, um, you've never been on the wrong path. Um, okay. Everything you've ever put your hand to has been awesome and productive and you're growing. But man, you, you, it's almost regarded as being a journey and you literally just opened up a, a door. Yeah. To, you are thinking this week, you're thinking in terms of building things like I've never seen you think before. And so it's like a, a light bulb aha moment. And right. it's like, carry on, just keep on doing what you're doing. And what what um, it was is I just, I drew the picture of uh, the schematic of uh, where the muscles are. Mm -hmm. And then that automatically I transferred it out of the, wait a minute, wait a minute, where's the vastus medialis? Yep. Where is it? And, I, and rather than just tracing a picture, there it was. That's exactly it. Yeah. 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 And it's like, now you understand, you, you actually, when you go to, the Metropolitan or the Uffizi or wherever you go. When we're, when we're allowed. Yeah, yeah, when we're allowed. Um, 
you will stand in front of a medieval painting and there's, I think it's the school of Luca. They have the figure of the Christ figure on the cross and he has like 18 ribs <laughs> <laughs> and he has like a 12 pack. Um, and, but you look at it, I'll, I'll say this quickly, highly stylized. You'll look at it and you'll be like, there's no higher art form than this. This is so beautiful. These paintings are like 17 feet tall and they're from uh, cathedrals like in deep Italy. And it's hyper stylized and it's perfection for what yeah. it is. And so it's absolutely beautiful. But then you'll look at the Renaissance and you'll be like, you understand why the Renaissance came about because Da Vinci would have stood in front of that painting of a Messiah and just been like 18 ribs, really? Like, and then for the Serratus interior, they made him look like a, a car radiator grill. But it's just like a bunch of them like disappearing in a diagonal. So everything's stylized, but I mean, that really is a product of a, um, a culture, which at that point was observing the superficial surfaces without endeavoring to understand anything of right. function. And then Da Vinci comes along. Da Vinci would have just like, I bet you if he could have, he, he probably would have burnt those <laughs> pieces. Um, and then he brings in naturalism and science and understanding. Yeah. And um, that's where, again, going back to that whole idea, I don't think Da Vinci, in my opinion, saw science and art. I think he saw science and art where it was like this. It was one and the same. And that's... That's a beautiful thing. So uh, I'm just excited to know what you're on. So you, you kind of know your work uh, for the next week. <laughs> <laughs>